Okay, I have taken Eileen's colors and I have separated them out into color palettes. I have a warm color palette and a cool one. You do not want to use wet media blending those two palettes together. You always want to separate them because these colors mixed with these colors make mud. Okay. So looking at them, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, those are all of your warms. So I really think it's a good practice. When you get back to your seat, take your colors, make yourself a warm pile and a cool. And the cools are your blues and your purples and your greens. And you can think of it like sunrise and like pasture like green grass, blue flowers, you know, all those kind of blues. They feel really cool, really relaxing, where these ones are hot, fiery. Then there's things like black and white, gray, browns. I would say in general, those are your neutrals. They don't really have an either or. Um, and there are a million exceptions to these general rules too, because a lot of the colors are tertiary colors, where they're mixed with both, like magenta. It's red and purple, mm -hmm. but I think it's more red, so I put it with the warms. Even though, yes, it might mix with turquoise and it might mix with blue, it won't mix with green. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so when I paint, right now I've just got a palette of my cools. There's no reason to put my warms in there because if I'm painting with wet color, there's no reason for me to have wet. Does that make sense? So when you go to start painting, whether it's just taking a brush and painting a background or whether you're blending color together, you should never have them mixed. I do use a palette pad. Did anybody bring a palette pad? It's a pad of paper where you just put your, pa your paints on. I like to do that. Sometimes I have two of them, a warm one and a cool one, but I also have two palettes where when I'm using it, if you notice, I'll have a cool palette of paint and they usually only have six holes or six swells and I have a warm and I separate them each time and it's not because I need to but it's a great practice I'll pull this one closer when I'm using it put that one away the other one so I don't accidentally okay so I also have a puddle of gesso I said earlier to you oh you have two as well look at you uh, uh, I also have a puddle of gesso when, remember, when we, if you did the pan pastel or we did any of those pan pastels, I told you there was pure colors and tints. In order to get the pure value of a color, it's easier to add white to it while you're mixing it because then you not only just get one flat color, you're going to get several variations depending on how much gesso is mixing with it as you're going along. Also, it's always good to buy paint in sister colors and this is not a real term this is Donna language but you don't ever want to just buy teal you want to buy teal with a darker color it doesn't have to be the same color I like anthoquinone blue I don't know if anybody has that but that's one of my favorites with this or phthalo turquoise that's green um, but you want to always buy a light and a dark so you should never have one turquoise you should have two and you should never have one green you should have two and sap green is a great combo for this um, because it gives it more life